Hi there, nice to have you back. So in this video, I want to continue with that example of the strategy decision-making problem. And it is important that you watch, if you haven't done so yet, watch the very first video that I did on this problem because in there I explain what the story of the problem is and we build the first two decision trees that I'm going to need to go over in order to explain what I want to explain in this video, which is the concept of risk profiles. So I'm going to leave a link to the first video for you to watch in the description of this video here. And also it will appear in up top for you to click on the in the top corner of this video as well. Great. So the idea of risk profiles essentially has to do with, you know, the number here that appears at the very front of your decision tree when the tree is finished, right? This number is trying to summarize in a single value what you expect to happen if you were to follow the recommendations of your tree. So in this particular story, right, you could either run a test or not, which is a survey of the market. And uh, the tree begins by telling you, I think you should do it, so follow branch one. Run the test, and the test could be encouraging or discouraging for your product. If it's encouraging, the tree says, go aggressive. If it's discouraging, the tree says, go with a conservative or cautious strategy, right? And it summarizes all this information into a single number that says, if you follow what the tree suggests, you, your expected monetary value, your EMV, will be $12.955 million. Now, for decisions that you perform you know, repeatedly, using an average or an expectation like this to guide yourself is not as much of a problem because, as you know, averages ignore extreme situations and they can be misleading. But if you're doing this over and over, the average in the long run is the number you're going to converge to. So even though sometimes you may do poorly, the times that you're going to do well will compensate for that and then you, you really get to this average value. But in situations that are not like this, maybe they are one-time decision problems, just looking at an average value like this can be dangerous and misleading because you really want to consider the risks involved that this average is kind of hiding from you. And there comes the concept of a risk profile. And essentially, in short, what a risk profile is, is a breakdown of this number here. Where does this come from? Why is this number 12.955? Depending on the decision tree add-in that you are using, there could be a little button that you push that will calculate the risk profile for you. This particular add-in that we are using does not have that. So I'm going to show you how to calculate it by hand. It's not too bad. And I like it because it kind of gives you a little bit more insight of what the tree is calculating. So here's the idea. You first follow whatever the tree is telling you and go through the branches and figure out where are the endpoints that you could find yourself at. So let's do this here. Uh, it first tells me to go branch one, that is do the test. And if I do that, there is a event branch. So I could either end up this way or that way. So we're going to consider both possibilities. If the test is encouraging, the tree says do A. And if I do A, the market could be either strong or weak. So if I follow this top suggestion of the tree, I could either find myself here making 29.5 million or here losing 8.5 million. So let me highlight those as two of the potential situations I could find myself in tomorrow, let's say, if I were to follow what the tree says. So I, these are two possible tomorrows for me. And this is if a test is encouraging. Notice that this other piece of the tree, I am not going to end up there because the tree is not telling me to go that way. I did use this piece of the tree to calculate and come up with the recommendation. But this is not a possible tomorrow for me because the tree says don't even bother with these. If the tests were discouraging, the tree says to go with a cautious or conservative strategy. That's why there's a three in here. So if I do that, the market could again be strong or weak. So these are two other outcomes or potential tomorrows that I could be facing. So let me paint them green as well. 
and this pretty much is these are pretty much all of the endpoints that I could find myself at uh, were I to follow what the tree says and I don't go down here and so on so let's take those values the 29 and a half the minus eight and a half and copy them over here okay so 29 and a half minus eight and a half and then the others are four and a half and fourteen and a half okay now what I would like to calculate is what are the chances I will find myself in those situations let's see for me to end up here the test I run needs to be encouraging and after that once I pick the A strategy the market has to turn out to be strong so this event has to happen and this event has to happen and because they are independent events the chance of both of them happening is equal to the product of their individual individual probabilities so the chance of me finding myself here is going to be this number here 0.435 times this number here so i'm going to multiply what's in cell o13 with w1 so let me put that there o13 times w1 And I'm going to do a similar thing for all the other numbers, okay? So let's go. What is the chance I will find myself in this situation? Well, encouraging test, O13, but a weak market, W6. Let's put that here. O13, W6. Now let's go look at the discouraging branch, right? Because I could end up here as well. The chance I will find myself here is if the test was discouraging, that's the probability in O43, and the market turned out to be strong, W51. So O43 times W51, that is the chance I will be making four and a half million dollars. And finally, the chance I will be making 14 and a half will be the same discouraging test chance is in 043 but then followed by a weak market chance in w56 so here 043 w56 so this table here is the risk profile itself again it is taking this number 12955 and telling me well this is an expectation 12955 what could actually be happening to you tomorrow is you could be making this much money with this chance or losing this much money with this chance and making this much money with this chance or making this much money with this chance. Turns out if I do a sum product here between these values and their respective chances, this is essentially a calculation of an expectation this shouldn't surprise you that this number matches this number because they are coming from the same calculation. So how informative is this? Well, way more informative than a single number. Let's think about it. Instead of me telling you, hey guys, let's just do what the tree says because it is looking like we're going to make almost $13 million, I can say the following. And again, bring this table to a meeting and talk to your you know, business um, colleagues. You know, guys, if we were to follow this, there is a 16.5% chance we're going to lose $8.5 million. And someone may be concerned about that. They may think, well, man, 16.5 is not negligible. You could also look at this from the other point of view. There is an over 83% chance that you're going to be in the positive, right? Another interesting um, tidbit here is the following. Even though the expectation is 12.9, the chance of me making more than that is what? Well, this makes more than that, and this makes more than that, right? If you sum these two numbers, you can say, well, look, there is almost a two-thirds chance we will be making more than 12.9. This might be, you know, encouraging to some people. In essence, what I'm trying to show you is that looking at this table of numbers is significantly more informative and useful than just looking at this one number. 
that is basically hiding from you, you know, the good and the bad that can actually happen. And that's the value of calculating a risk profile and, you know, taking this to a, a conversation before you make an important decision. All right? Great. This is all I wanted to cover in this video and show you how to calculate the risk profile in case your decision tree at the end does not have that functionality built in. And uh, I hope this was useful. Thank you guys for watching as always and hope to see you back here for more videos. Bye-bye.